and welcome to the Trey Stewart program. Once again, we are here uh, with our in-house white guy, White Rob. Everybody say hi, White Rob. <laughs> What's going on? Hi, everybody. How's it? Uh, how's it going today, man? It's going. It's going great. I'm keeping it right. Keeping it white. <laughs> keeping it white. That's good. That's good. And you know, uh, you guys are kind of an endangered species. Did you know that? Uh, we're we're losing numbers. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Like white people are going extinct quickly. I think by the year 2040, white people are going to be the minority. Uh, how does that make you feel? I mean, it's it's been a long time coming. I'm glad that we were able to uh, stay in control as long as we did. But, you know. You put up good numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you guys really did the thing, you know. Uh, and I think you'll go down in the, in the, in the, in the hallmark you know, of history, uh, Hall of Fame, as uh, the best to have ever done it. It mm -hmm. being genocide. Mm -hmm. And I think it's time for everybody else to, to, to take a crack at it. You know, white people, you guys have a... Uh, and But the, the thing about it is that white we, people... We, we, we raise the bar. So you have a lot... The other yeah. races have a lot to, to live up to. We, we got big shoes to fill, for mm -hmm. sure. And mm -hmm. I think it's my job as a current minority. I want to uh, fill white people in on what's in store. Uh, so you guys know how you got rights? Yeah, sure. Kiss those goodbye. Fuck. But on the flip side, your potato salad will be banging. Nothing makes food taste better than struggle. That's really better. You know, it's like it's salt, it's butter, and it's uh, generational rape. <laughs> and nothing, nothing makes... Fuck. <laughs> that's good. That, that's what makes a good food. That's the recipe, if anybody was curious. We got a lot of stuff to talk about. Good, good episode. We got my friend Justin. Uh, he's on, and he's a great actor. Got some Netflix stuff coming up, which is cool. But I want to start off with uh, admitting that there is a, there's a war going on. And I've tried to stay out of it, but it's becoming increasingly hard to uh, stay neutral. And you got to pick a side. Of course, I'm talking about the war between Kanye West and Pete Davidson. <laughs> That's... Uh, it's getting out of control, right? I mean, I, I heard Biden is actually considering putting a, uh, sanctions on Pete Davidson's penis. I don't think that's far enough, honestly. You know, that's a start. You want military action? <laughs> yeah, we no got more it. sanctions. No more sanctions. We need a no-fly zone with Pete Davidson's dick. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's got it's causing too much mayhem. No, of course, yeah, the media wants you to focus on the war, right? And they want you to focus on you know all this stuff. But everybody knows that. The biggest threat to society right now isn't Putin, it's not China. It is, in fact, transgender women competing in women's sports. Everybody's losing their mind. Leah, what's her name? Thomas? Leah Thomas, yes. Leah Thomas just won. She's a, uh, the first transgender woman uh, to win uh, at swimming. I guess she can swim. She swam faster than, than the other bitches. She's an extremely fast swimmer. Extremely fast swimmer. And uh, people are mad. You know what I mean? It's hard for me to have an opinion on this, so I'm going to uh, just look to the one person that probably has the best opinion on this. Who better to turn to than the former athlete slash murderer, Caitlyn Jenner? Um, the problem is the NCAA and the rules, they really need to take a serious look about what's happening in women's sports. But this is not an easy, it's a tough subject. Um, that there are there's no one answer to fit that fits everything i think there is an answer okay people are talking oh do we let leah uh, uh uh do we create her own maybe trans women league that they can kind of have their own separate but equal league but it's separate but it's still equal uh or do we let trans women compete with you know biological women it's a mess i say that not only do we not let trans women compete in women's sports but we just get rid of women's sports altogether. What are we doing? Who's watching the WNBA? Nobody. Women get in the kitchen, get out of the pool, put the basketball down, and pick up a motherfucking pan. Women have a place in society, and it's not in sports. I think we can all agree on that. So, uh, well, finally, at least that way, men can compete in some of these sports that women are dominating in, like shooting and uh long distance running and long distance swimming yeah i think it's we we get 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 rid of it completely i don't understand gymnastics i don't understand it at all uh figure skating they're eating our lunch in all of these I, I i don't understand it but i think it's uh 
you know, that's my take on that. Get rid of women's sports. Uh, but you know what? I I think this is all a distraction. All right. And I, I think really they're trying to force this into our uh, uh, in front of our face to distract us from the real threat to society. Inflation. Inflation. Uh, it's a bigger problem than transgender uh, people. It's a bigger problem than uh, Joe Rogan. You know, it's the biggest problem we have faced as a society. And according to Democrats, inflation is out of Biden's hands. Biden has nothing to do with inflation. Can we have an honest conversation about gas prices? Because too much of the U.S. media chatter is distorted to the point of being dishonest. Higher gas prices is a small sacrifice to make. Many politicians act as though it's President Biden who caused inflation <laughs> and that he can fix this. No, I mean, you know, he did not cause the war which caused prices to surge. And you heard the president of the United States come out say Putin's price hike. Putin's price hike. A Putin price hike. Putin's price hike. And Putin's price hike is a great way to message it. It's all Putin, baby. That's it. That's even though gas prices were rising a year ago, it's Putin's fault. Democrats are really good at two things, losing elections and blaming Russia for shit that they just failed at. I mean, it's ridiculous. Putin is a good scapegoat, though, you know? I mean, Putin is the reason that I cheated on my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I mean, I was like, well, honey, I, I didn't put those panties there. It was Putin. But the truth is, it's not all Putin, right? Despite what Joe Biden says or any of them. Uh, there's a lot of companies, these oil companies are seeing record profits. So they're raking in money and... They're making the little guys pay. Us, poor people, regular Americans, we're the ones that are paying the price. But you know what? The elites have a solution. Since the invasion, oil prices have skyrocketed. Today, the average gas price in America hit an all-time record high of over $4 per gallon. Okay, that stings, but a clean conscience is worth a buck or two. I'm willing to pay. It's important. Right. It's important. I'm willing to pay $4 a gallon. Hell, I'll pay $15 a gallon because I drive a Tesla. <laughs> Their solution to the high prices is you got to eat it and you got to eat it because it's worth it. What I love about uh, this next article, the Bloomberg, is in the article they have some fun little tips on how to, you know, handle this uh, uh, inflation and rising prices. This is a uh, is an article by Teresa Ghilarducci, March 13th, 2022, uh, in Bloomberg Opinion. It says, inflation stings most if you earn less than $300,000. Here's how to deal. To deal with gas prices, it's, it's worth reconsidering public transportation, right? <laughs> so it's like, okay, you got a car? Sell it. Walk. Just take the bus. You know, like now certainly isn't the time to splurge. When, when it comes to food, uh, eat less of it, less, uh, sometimes it's none at all. Okay, stop being a fat pig. What do you need, <laughs> three meals a day? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like we all have to make sacrifices, like Colbert said. He's making a sacrifice uh, by making funny jokes and getting paid millions of, do of dollars. And I'm making a sacrifice too. I'm no longer having sex with Russian hookers. Also, if it says right here, if you're one of the Americans that became a new pet owner during the pandemic, a lot of people got a pet. If you got a pet and that pet has cancer, maybe no chemo. <laughs> it's like, I mean, you're like, it, it's, it's tough, but it's a sacrifice that I think we all have to make. No chemo for your dog. That's a fun conversation. Hey, Scruffy, I've got some good news and bad news. Uh, the bad news is that I can't afford chemo because Putin's being a little bit of a silly goose. But the good news is that apparently you're going to heaven. So I guess it all works out. They make some good points. You know what I mean? Right, Rob? I mean, also you can, uh, <laughs> one of the things they say you can do is uh, kill yourself. <laughs> Save some money that way. Save your money. Listen, are you alive? Well, maybe you shouldn't be. Yeah, you know, balance that budget real fast. I think yeah, we can, and, and and that's that's important things we can all do. But some people are doing more than others, right? Some people are really going above and beyond. Like this guy in Detroit, 
Detroiter Dr. M. Dijon Johnson says in just a few days he'll be on the front lines fighting the war against Russia. So far, he's already ordered a Kevlar helmet and flak jacket and all the other necessities. This Wednesday, the 62-year-old will be flying to Amsterdam and then to Poland. From there, he plans to travel to Ukraine and immediately join the battle. As you can imagine, Dr. Johnson's family is totally against this. I wish I was this guy. Like, this guy is either the dumbest person ever or he's got the smartest alibi. Ever. Like, I don't think this guy's going to Ukraine at all. I think it's some, just some shit he said to his wife. It's like, honey, you're not going to hear from me for a couple of months. I'm going to fight Ukraine uh, and I'm going to need these condoms and this lube <laughs> from Putin. He's willing to leave Detroit and go to an active battle zone. I think that says less about this guy and more about Detroit. He even said, he's like, I'm going to go to Ukraine. I'm going to fight this battle. I'm going to win. And then he's like, and then I'll come back and get to Detroit, which shows you how he's like, yo, the Ukraine thing is solvable right now. Like, in terms of priorities, he's like, I'll circle back to helping Detroit. This nigga looked outside, he's like, yo, I'm gonna take my chances with Putin. Fuck y'all niggas. It's like, damn. I'm gonna get some army surplus flak jackets. Damn, but well, that just shows you how, how, how crazy things are, man. I mean, listen, man, God bless his heart. Uh, and hey, man, you know, he's, he's fighting the good fight. Uh, he's a fucking idiot. But you know, <laughs> Listen, I got a great interview for you guys. Uh, my friend Justin is, is really talented. You guys are going to love him. Uh, so please enjoy my interview with Justin Cornwell. Is it Cornwell? It's a Trey Stewart program. Uh, yeah, you know where I am in the studio all day. Uh, Trey, Trey, yeah. Trey, 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 Trey. Uh, they call me Trey Day because I do it my way. Uh, I'm like McDonald's. All right, that's it. That's I ran out of. That's as much black uh, as I have in me. I'm but pretty was, sure there's there's more <laughs> black hidden deep down. I in ran the out. I dug. Of Trey Stewart. No, I can't. I I can't rap at all. The fact that I managed to say words, uh, was, was very impressive. You know something, man. I think that you cut that up. You know what I'm saying, right there. Yeah. Throw a little rick -a -rick -a on it. Yeah. And it's, that's that's something. Shit, that's just slapping, bro. We did it, man. We did that's it. it. We'll get, I think we did it. Hop on it. Oh hell yeah, man. <laughs> Well, Mahis. Yeah. He was here yesterday when some of my was, best work was, uh, that was pretty good. Recording in the other room. <laughs> I'm going to sell these beats. So, like, you know what I'm saying? I'll call them mouth beats. The only, the only mouth beats. So, I'm just going to have a, <laughs> a website where you only get mouth beats. And they're going to be like, but they're going to be sequenced in Fruity Loops. Yeah. And they're going to be mouth beats where it's like, sound like, don't worry, be happy. They all slap. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You man. know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, could, I could dig it, man. That's funny. that's right. I'm just going. It's going to be hot. Look, I'm the first one that thought of this. It's going to be like Justin Timberlake, Michael Jackson beats. Yeah, they so do. You hot. know what? Yeah, you should get on that, man. Do it before this podcast comes out. Oh no, my there. oh my ideas are ruined because yeah, yeah. of the internet. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you can't say you got to keep all the good ones to yourself. I know which, that sucks, but you know it is what it is, man. Uh, hopefully, two, maybe check, you, check, you check. got enough time. You got about like what I think a couple of weeks before this airs. Oh, so. is that is that the cycle of how long yeah, it usually yeah, takes yeah, to I do this? So. How'd yeah. you get started with this podcast? This is a is this new territory? Did you do a podcast before? Or? It was it's new. I've done m the other podcasts. Uh, you know, one with my friend Asana Mod, and uh, we did that kind of over the uh, the quarantine. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was the only other thing that I did like weekly. This is like my first solo, you know. Ah, how's it feel, man? So far, it feels good, man. Having fun, you know. Got uh, <laughs> brilliant producer Rob. I mean, the guy's intelligent. Yeah. I could just, I feel intelligent vibes from this man. And he's Jew. Are you Jewish? I am not Jewish. But your wife is. No. Uh, I, mean, I don't well, know. It's all right. Though. He's, I'm, I'm just. Uh, you're just what? You're white though. Yeah, I'm white. I'm white. I know, but you it's know, right, you know, yeah. Jewish people don't like being called white, man. <laughs> they don't. No one likes to be called white. It's a hard time for for white people, right? No. <laughs> Not really. I mean, listen, it's all the ridicule. Just mm -hmm. no. I mean, come on. You guys can't. I mean, I mean, listen. If you know, look, you're not fragile. Have you seen my credit score? Uh, I'll, take I the, I'll, take, I'll take the ridicule. Listen, yeah. man, I have a great credit score, and I'm black. And people oh, just like, well, see? They must have messed up at the office. Bre breaking stereotypes, <laughs> man. No, but that's why. Don't I, worry, I'll take care of it. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> I'll make a call. You can't. You're not Jewish. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, you, that's above your pay grade, man. Sorry, you cannot, sir. But, uh, no, yeah, that's. that. that thanks for us. Oh, I got to introduce you. I do. Uh, uh, hey, this is the uh, pod, my podcast, and I'm here with Justin, my friend. 
And uh, I don't you know which fucking... camera to look at. I'm just gonna look at them all <laughs> at the same time. Yeah, look at everything. We're we're getting your good side, which is all of them. Very good looking oh guy. Oh my gosh, no. <laughs> yeah, no, you are, and you know, I think sexuality is a spectrum, so I can admit that. It's all right. You're a good looking guy too. <laughs> oh, well, and thank you. You grow a full beard, and I envy you. <laughs> I just found out I could grow this beard. It, in quarantine? Over quarantine. <laughs> it was when we all stopped shaving. I didn't know I could grow a beard. <laughs> I didn't know my shit connected to last week. And yeah. It man. I, bro, it was out of, like, depression. We oh, all just God. stopped shaving, man. That's why I got one of them uh, derma rollers. I'm yeah. trying to get my shit popping right here on the side. Yeah, you know no, I, I see it. Well, I can't play the principal kind if you ain't got nothing. You know. <laughs> yeah, and that's it. true. Are they going to recast it? No. I, I heard that they were going to recast it, or they were thinking about it. Well, why would they? No one needs to beat T'Challa. Nobody. Yeah, so, but there was, is there an argument to be made uh, that maybe the character is bigger than an actor and there's more stories to be told? No, of course there's more stories to be told. I mean, if you, if, if you, especially if you start molding the X-Men and stuff like that, but maybe there's room for a new character to take the mantle but we have to fall in love with that character we have to be introduced to that character in a meaningful way you know what yeah. i mean the thing is that chadwick boseman had civil war before he had his own film and yeah, uh, yeah. and you know uh, well uh, and if that's the case all you need is one film and you know they just poop those out every week so yeah yeah you could do yeah. it also uh 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 what's his name Right, uh, my boy Michael B. Jordan, yeah, good friend of the podcast, Michael B. Jordan. Michael B. Jordan, yeah, good yeah. friend, good friend. Uh, he, but he could be, he could just step in. I mean, he could just step in. He's dead as hell, though. And then, then you know, just go to dead. Tangent Universe, and Michael B.'s alive, but he's also yeah. already the good guy. See, look, you don't even have to really yeah. explain this. You could just go to Tangent Universe, and he was already the good guy. Man, the, the, once you have alternate timelines and multiverse and it's that crazy. kind of stuff, it's very easy to recast yeah. people. And, just, and yeah. as a matter of fact, they're just not even recasting. It's like, this is the variant. I'm T'Challa yeah. variant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just look like Michael B. Jordan, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's well, some universe where Killmonger won, right? Oh, man. He's yeah. like, listen, I got to do Kree's over here with uh, with the dude who's playing your enemy and yeah. Ant-Man over here. So he has no time. But also... Him and Jonathan Majors doing Kree's over here. They also low-key showed that... Uh, uh, different variants don't even have to be the same species one of his was like an alligator yeah did exactly. you watch loki yeah but that, he's a shapeshifter though so and apparently no it was a really an alligator no, or a crocodile or something but i mean loki is a shapeshifter no 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 about all the variants he's it? a mish he's he, he's like a uh, no he's a he's he uses a giant magic. Right. he's a he's an yeah. ice giant who right. um was taken from it was basically saved but when he was nurtured as an asgardian he started to take on their form right which for me always was was always strange for me. I'm just wondering why the ice giants were like could do that. Yeah, yeah. I get. Well, I I, I don't I know. They never really explained. Some nerds know what, what it is. Wasn't it? Wasn't it? Yeah, uh, nerds. His mother. Ch chime in. It was his mother. His mother. No, I mean She's it was his. It was. She, his... she taught him how to use magic. How to use magic. Right. Oh, yeah, so probably. he's using magic to constantly control his form to look yeah. like love. Right. But right. one of the yes. forms. My point is, one of the forms wasn't <laughs> him uh, uh, in the like. Pretending to be a, a crocodile. It was just a, being a crocodile. He was right? like an actual crocodile. And Maybe was he was kid. adopted by the crocodile Asgardians. <laughs> right? And then was... <laughs> oh, that's... Oh, wow. The crocodile right. form. That makes sense. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I want to see a spinoff of Crocodile Loki, man. That's what I want. I mean, I'm just saying... <laughs> he was the breakout star of that show, if you watch I'm Loki. saying the monologues are going to be epic. But... Yeah. <laughs> so we're getting a, a, a ahead of ourselves. <laughs> The, <laughs> uh, yeah, tangent. Talk yeah. about tangent. Right yeah, no. Listen, that's uh, I know I love all that. That's good stuff. But I I did want to. You just did. Uh, you're uh, on top of being a, a great actor, and uh, you know musician. Uh, you're an artist. Yeah, man. Yeah, and you did uh, a cool poster. You drew that. Yeah, I drew that. The shit. movie. Uh, what's it? Havoc. Havoc. Yeah, this is a film yeah. coming out for Netflix this year. Uh, okay. You know, not a lot of. Uh, buzz about it yet so I didn't yeah. really want to reveal that but I started sending that picture out and some of the castmates and well, somebody really cool. got a hold of a fuzzy picture so and then they started <laughs> leaking my work and I'm like no it's mine you know <laughs> yeah. no I'm just like listen if you want to see it take a look but don't show them a fuzzy picture from far and then zoomed in and yeah. then I'm like oh man it look like I can't draw in this picture you know yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no. about that. it's dope yeah man and so that's coming out this year you worked with uh, uh, who's it the white guy you work with? The, Which white guy? The, uh, the main one. Well, like the... the... Which main one? <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm just kidding. The uh, white yeah, guys. The lead. <laughs> like the lead. Tom white Hardy. Guy. Tom Hardy. That's right. Yeah. Is he? Well, he was Venom. Yeah, he was Venom. He is the Venom. He is Venom. Yeah, he's Venom. <laughs> I don't whatever has zapped him back at the end of time. What they never even explained that. Not to get back on a uh, <laughs> Marvel <I'm fucking> <laughs> tangent, but they didn't explain. <laughs> <laughs> the they Venom never... symbiotes share a multiversal memory. Yeah, so, so if, one, if knows. one Venom knows who Spider Man is in any of the multiverses, then all the Venoms know it. Ven yeah, Venom is a multiversal creature. He can Wait exist in in and out of all the verses. That's why he can Wait still stay in that universe, even though Eddie Brock, as we know him in Sony's universe, goes back to Sony. But why Venom didn't, can stay in Marvel? Why didn't we just get Topher Grace Venom? Because Topher Grace is canceled. Is he? What did he do? If he, was, he wasn't good. You can get canceled <laughs> for that. Don't blame Topher Grace. <laughs> Listen, I'm not gonna. You can't come at my boy Topher Grace like Listen, that. Listen, I, I love that Topher 70s Grace. show, man. Nothing yeah. against Topher Grace. You ain't about to come at my boy as Grace. Venom. All right, As listen, Venom. I think it was a take for sure. I think, you know what that was for Sam Raimi? I'm a huge uh, Spider-Man nerd, and I think I, I watched like a the lot of documentaries. Yeah, the yeah. studio made him do it. And right. so his studio made him do it, and like I think he just said, <laughs> you know what? You made me do Venom, so I'm going to give you the shittiest Venom. Because I didn't want Venom. He didn't want Venom in the thing. So he I, so that I, was kind of That's like, not fair. You don't, don't give, don't It's not do, fair to Topher, because Topher thought he was like, yo, I'm giving it. You know, I mean, I think that, you know that's not fair because there's a moment where he literally is like, you see one and two, and you did, you on set, and you're looking at Spider Man, and you're saying the line the way that you're saying it, like, uh -huh, uh -huh. I'm like, come on, come on, you're doing a Jim Carrey impression you, from from the best worst Batman. No, Topher was a, he was doing his best. He was an innocent <laughs> bystander. In he the was. War he, he did get caught in the crossfire between, between Sam, Sam Raimi and the studio. And the studio. <laughs> Poor. <laughs> but just just like all those actors who yeah. was in that Josh Trank um, yeah. uh, film, uh, that was Josh Trank, right? Yeah. Who? Um, oh, fan, fan four stick. Yeah, right. the fan four, the fan four, Fantastic Four. I'm not gonna hate on it. All those all those guys went on to have okay careers. Apparently, <laughs> Miles Teller, and Michael B. Jordan's in there, and some uh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the Mara sisters in there. So I mean, it's like yeah, they went on to do well, and I know that. That kind of was a similar situation where you're like, oh my gosh, it's it's this on tour versus the studio, mm -hmm. and I think that you you see that a lot because the studio wants certain things, and then sometimes you'll notice that the studio will bomb you if they don't like you, and 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 make you still work for them while they bomb you, just like yeah, like. A, what do you mean they'll like? Because it seems like that would be. Well, I mean, you know. I, you know, I've seen it, or I'm not gonna say it was me or what, whoever, but I've seen it where the studio would. I've seen it where the what studio, studio did you wrong? Who fucked you over? No one. <laughs> Never happened to me. <laughs> this young, this brother wants to work in Hollywood. You're, you're gonna make it, man. You're gonna make it, man. Yeah, I don't no. know where those bodies are buried. <laughs> what bodies? God damn it. No, so, <laughs> but what are, what's some of the things that you've, because you've been on, you've done TV, you've done movies now. Yeah. What's what's one of the things that, you, that are like, you've that you learned was like, hmm, they unnecessarily yeah. get in their own way. Listen, I think a lot of the time, um, it's all about maximizing their dollar. You know what I mean? Right. And sometimes maximizing their dollar means putting you out to pasture. Yeah, I've been on two canceled television shows. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I'm not yeah. saying that either one of those two shows were this because of this happened and that happened and this and that mm -hmm. or whatever politics are involved in that. I, I would also say that being on those shows allowed me to understand that sometimes just because you spent two, three million dollars a week on the show uh, and spent 10 weeks doing the show doesn't mean that that is anything to them. Yeah, they could. Well, because that's I guess chump change, right? Yeah, I, I mean I'm not gonna say I was I was, <laughs> I was on this show, and uh, um, what it was, was the name the, of it. Uh, I'm not gonna say, but it was this show that I was on. Well, everybody go on this IMDb <laughs> and try to figure. It out was one of the shows that I was on. So good luck. <laughs> and uh, it was the show I was on, and I was doing the red carpet thing, and I was shaking hands with the president of the studio, and mm -hmm. he goes, "Oh." You're you're so good in the show, um, blah, blah blah. I've heard such great things, and I was like, "Oh, so so you watched it?" And he goes, "No." I'm like the audacity to ask me if I watched your show. <laughs> Hell no, I didn't watch it. <laughs> he 
was just, like, it heard good stuff. But he heard, so he, all he needs to do is hear. Exactly, because he's not watching any of the programming on the actual Why don't TV. They wa- but that's the problem, right? It's like you, you would think you would want to be invested. At least watch, check it out. Yeah. But he's <laughs> Actually, just like, he's right. He shouldn't be invested or check it out because even if it's even if it's only mildly good, right? Why would he? Why would I want? Why would he be wasting his time watching the shows? What is he like? The critic? Was he going to do a review? No, but I, I guess wouldn't you be interested if you were producing something? Wouldn't you just want to watch? Just he's not producing sure? stuff. He's the president of the studio. So, but your name is 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 like attached to it. So even right. though you know what I mean, it's, but, your, name's uh, but atta- also, your name's attached to. F- but there's also fifty things. other shows yeah. that you're yeah. also overseeing. How can you watch even half of that? And you got to do the job. So you're saying there's too many shows. It's too much. Him it's too to much. Watch. I don't. But okay, there's a difference between I can't get to every show and I'm not watching shit. And no, I, mean, I don't think it's because people, because watch, people shit. watch shit. But sometimes a lot it's kind of like don't watch anything. They don't just gonna get, they're so far removed. That's the problem. It's like they they got people doing the job, and then by the they're just kind of like living life. Do you think music artists only listen to their music, or do you think they branch out when it's time to take in other music? You know what I mean? Oh, I, I think it's just a hundred percent. It's like different. You know, it, that has to be different because, you know, I know as a comedian, some comedians choose to not listen to comedy because they don't want to be influenced, uh, and then other comedians. Consume I, myself. I consume a good amount of comedy, but I know a lot of people. They go, "Oh, I don't watch specials because I just don't want to." So I don't know. Like I think it's different for music. I, I what mean, do, what do you think? No, I mean, I think that sometimes you just get a little too high in your own supply, and you just kind of say, need other things. "And you need to be, you know, I maybe you've been you on do. downers. You need to yeah. do some uppers. You need to get back to your homeostasis." And your sometimes your own content doesn't do that for you. You know what I mean? No, no, yeah. I, I, I think. Uh, if you're really trying to be good at whatever you're doing, whether it's music or comedy or anything, and you're acting, aren't you going to watch the competition? Aren't you going to see what's going on out there, with what other people are doing? So in in his defense, I'd only say that maybe he's too busy watching one of the other networks and not our network so he can figure out how to best serve his network. Well, statistically speaking, he was pressuring a young woman to suck his dick. Oh, that's not him. <laughs> no, not him. But <laughs> he might have been one of the good ones. But he I was. He was one. Of, he's one of the best ones. That's great. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> and but I'm just saying the numbers aren't good. But that's I was like good it wasn't, wasn't Les Moonves. So All about. right, yeah. <laughs> so it wasn't CBS. So we can get CBS <laughs> off the list. <laughs> but uh, we'll figure it out by the end of the podcast. Uh, you'll but, try. <laughs> <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Les Moonves. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Last week it was Raytheon. Yeah, yeah. No, the Raytheon is a current. Oh, is a okay. That's a season long. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Raytheon bought bought into the show. They saw, they saw one show. They said we're all in. (laughs) So shout out to Raytheon. Uh, Oh my god. Raytheon. Uh, Raytheon isn't that? uh, Don't they make computer stuff? Close. They make like uh, they profit off of war. They sell like weapons. Oh, cool. Good. Good for them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everybody needs the, you know, the means by which to kill their enemies. And you should make a lot of money <laughs> off it. Exactly. Right? If people are going to die, you may as well make a lot of money. All right, all right. <laughs> so, enemies are after me. <laughs> that was... I mean, just going to go across the bottom of the screen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right you need to kill your enemies, you should make a lot of money doing it. You should it. make a lot of you money. You should. I mean, listen, I, I appreciate... I hope Putin's making some money. I, well, I hope... Putin I don't know what's going on. isn't making any money. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I you guess know did you know they're not going <laughs> to release the Batman in Russia? He's about to have an uprising. You know Russia's love Batman, dude. Well, that is like the <laughs> that's that that will work. They I love Warner Brothers or whatever studio it is. They were like, "Yo, we can't stand for this." Exactly. You dude. think you're going to get the Batman and and keep <laughs> acting a fool? Nope. <laughs> they was just like, "Yo, yo, we're going to do our part." Yeah. No Batman for Russia's. They're taking away the Snyder Cut. <laughs> no longer allowed in Russia. Oh, my. No, they said, y'all can have that. Y'all can have the Snyder Cut. All right. <laughs> you, you can have the original have Josh that. Wheaton League. You can have all that. That's yours. <laughs> y'all y'all can keep watching that, but no Robert Patton bat. You know, no Robert not... Patton, man. <laughs> God. No you... Robert Pattinson for you guys. I don't know what to think about this movie because, like, I think it looks the best. I think he could do a good job. I'm just so I, Listen, tired. have you seen him in Good Time? Have you seen him in The yeah. Lighthouse? You know, I think that what I've realized about Robert Pattinson as an actor is that he's very committed to doing a job, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I feel like 
also he has that tormented spirit of of a wa- rageful white man boiling underneath him. He does, and he plays uh, rageful white very well. And I just <laughs> feel like guy. that's exactly yeah. what Batman deserves. Well, there hasn't <laughs> been a there hasn't been a rageful Batman. I always wanted to see a more detective. I think Batman. that I, like at ben the Affleck, same time, like I feel Ben like Affleck was, kinda... was cool, but Ben Affleck to me, dude, is very. He's too he's too straight and narrow. I need somebody who's yeah. a detective because they kind of are, are get off on murder. You know oh, what I mean? That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And maybe this is what <laughs> what's uh, that movie uh, with Jake Gyllenhaal? Which one? Uh, the the one where he like chases the ambulance and he's taking pictures of everybody. Oh, uh, Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. want my Batman to be like Jake Gyllenhaal and Nightcrawler, and I think he's going to be this. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's great. All right, if he's if he's that, then I'll I'll be I'm down for that. Also, uh, if they lean more into because what has me uh, my hopes high is that the villain is the Riddler and it's Paul Dano. You're right. So and but but, but and so Penguin's but that means that, well, that's cool. But the Riddler, what that means, what it suggests. You don't like the Penguin, apparently. <laughs> well, no. Listen, what I'm saying because the Penguin uh, was always, I guess, you know, I'm not mad at the Penguin, but like. Never really got my attention as a villain. Well, did but you know HBO Riddler, doing a whole spinoff show with him? Is it Danny DeVito? No, it's your it boy. It should be Danny DeVito. No, Danny DeVito is already the Penguin's granddad. No, it's... it's. <laughs> but it's, that's what I want to see. I want to see the pink. If it's a generational thing where they're all living in one house... And Danny DeVito is the granddad. The Penguins. The Penguins. But they can't, the peng- use, make they can't that. use Danny DeVito. They can't use, <laughs> I want to see the they can't. Penguins. They cannot use Danny Why DeVito. Why can't they use Danny DeVito? Because Danny DeVito is part of Tim Burton's Batman. And Tim Burton's Batman is already canon now because your boy Michael Keaton's coming back for Flashpoint. Yeah. We already know this. And if you're out there well, and they you don't can... know this, you're not a nerd. Good job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fuck you, uh, not nerds. Right. For for not knowing what the fuck we're talking about, but um, you've had your time. Yeah, yeah, yeah you have. If you don't know what time. Havoc is <laughs> on Netflix, you're coming out. You're not a nerd. Yeah, or you are a nerd. <laughs> Whichever one is better for you to go check it out right now. I don't. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's yeah. guilting you into going <laughs> to find out what this movie's about. Whichever makes you feel worse. Yeah, but yeah. no, I, <laughs> I think so. You know, fuck the Penguin, uh, unless fuck it's Danny DeVito. But the the Riddler, you know who it is. The Riddler is uh, fine, but the Riddler makes it maybe it might be more psychological the riddler for me was the best villain well i'm a jim carrey fan right yeah yeah, so, yeah. I, think, I thought that was fun i don't know if that was the most correct or I, authentic uh, no i think but at that moment i felt like i was, was he fun. was able to get me to suspend disbelief about batman shit between him and Heath ledger i didn't really care for any other other villains i've watched and and, and maybe the penguin but he was creepy you know what I mean? I didn't like any of the other villains in, in almost any Batman movie. Wait a minute. What, what about Michelle Pfeiffer? Michelle Pfeiffer wasn't a villain. Michelle right. Pfeiffer was just a crazy chick. And you know what happens when you get a crazy chick. Sometimes she's trying to man. Sometimes she's trying to kill you. But in the end, she dies because her cats eat her. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> it's a tale as old as time. Exactly. That classic. Yeah. Yeah. It's, come on. She's just. It's just a. It's just a tale of a. It's. It's yeah. overdone. <laughs> right, exactly. So, I, yeah, I that, see it every see every TV show. So girl getting eaten by a cat. <laughs> you like Jack Nicholson Joker? Right, Jack Nicholson Joker was good. I think for the time because listen, I'm <laughs> I watched Jack Nicholson's Joker, and to me, he was very uh, theatrical. Right. Yeah. And it it just landed somewhere right in between for me. Right. But you know who I saw? I like Tom and Lee, the Two Face. He did a good Two Face. I liked it. Not that the Two Face was good; it was horrible, right? But he was having so much fun. Well, that's what made it good, right? right? That's yeah, what yeah, made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know that shit was fun. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, <laughs> it was supposed know. to be um, Lando Calrissian. Uh, oh, really? Are you wow. talking about um, Billy D. Williams? Billy D. Yeah, because he was Harvey Dent in the first uh, Batman, and then he was supposed to be Two Face, and they even like wrote the script. With him as Two Face and Mar- Marlon Wayans was going to be what? was going to be uh, Robin. Uh, uh, too many black guys. They already. lost. They lost. Uh, they lost. Um, Tim Burton. He didn't direct it. He didn't direct a third one. Oh, yeah. that's. What, are you serious? Yeah. Why would you know? I think I, I have an issue. Whoa. Like I love Marlon Wayans in the the Wayans Brothers show. I yeah, love, yeah, yeah. I, I don't love know like the ori- I mean, original I'm, scary movies and stuff. Yeah, I'm open to him being back, uh, Robin. I don't. I'm not. But really I, sure. maybe at the time, I, like maybe at the time, if that happened and that really went off, he would be doing 
maybe he would be more doing more drama stuff. Probably. I just think about Probably. if G.I. Joe if, been if G.I. Joe was like Earlier? A, a dope ass film. Yeah, yeah. I think he, I think he would be doing trying to be doing more drama stuff. But I feel like now it's just like y'all, you want you know goofball comedy, then you get goofball comedy. But I feel like at yeah. one point he was like, let me let me get up in there and let me get. Let me, you know, let me make it hot. Like I felt like I felt I a push for got, him to do more. He's got some dramatic jumps. work. I think he's probably not done yet. Maybe well, you know, I saw respect. Gonna... You saw what What's respect? With the oh, Rita he was Franklin. he did that. Yeah, he he played. I haven't seen that. Is that out? Yeah, yeah, it's been out for a long time. Now. Damn. All right. I it's all right. It. It's all right. <laughs> I got screeners. I'll I'm gonna slide them to you. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Uh, oh, it hasn't been out. You got a been special out. screener. No, it's been out. I got screeners now that I get screeners for stuff that's on Netflix. Okay. I mean, was like, why did you send me this? I have a Netflix <laughs> subscription. You don't even give this to your regular users. You know what I mean? But no, I mean, so well, I, yeah. it was kind of nice to see him do something a little bit more dramatic. I just wish that he had been doing it this whole time. Yeah. I remember at one point. Well, if he had been robbing. I remember at one point he had this audition tape. And when I was back in Chicago, man, and I used to just scour the internet for audition tapes. He had this audition tape that was for Richard Pryor. You remember that? He has a great Richard Pryor. Right? Yeah, it's great. And, and he, he did this whole tape, you know what I mean? And uh, it was out there. It wasn't like it was particular, but you know, like me, I'm like, man, I want to put together something like, I could be Nat King Cole, look at me. And then <laughs> and then like he was just like, oh shit, I could be Richard Pryor, shit. And then yeah. it was just like, nah, it's your, it's your boy. What's his name? Mike Epps. And I was just like, uh, dang, that's tough. That's tough to beat, though. Yeah. Because he's, I think he's more innately Richard Pryor. I guess Mike is more innately, yeah. I, I mean, even though... Uh, it's I mean you know shout out to Mike Epps, one of the one of the funniest guys out there. But like uh, I think it's uh, Marlon, for some reason, maybe has a more younger rich, like like yeah, right. younger Rich. Like I think Mike maybe embodied him a little older when Rich really didn't give a fuck. But there was a young Rich that had like vigor in his eyes. There's something about Marlon, and that maybe Marlon, he's he, too dark. He Marlon? Yeah. He he's he's too dark? Yeah, to play like, Richard. Uh you mean skin, dark. Like dark darker skin. skin. But yeah, yeah, also yeah. his eyes, um, I think there's something that lives in something. the eyes, right? There is something, yeah, yeah. And his eyes to me look a bit sadder. Not sadder as in he's depressed, but sadder as in heavier. Who, Marlon? Yeah. Richard Pryor to me always had he didn't have to bug his eyes. He was, he was just going to do it. You know, and like it was going to come out of but his Rich, face. But Richard did bug his eyes. That's what I'm saying. Richard. Yeah, right. Richard. But did, with Marlon, yeah. you always see him like he's like, no, I'm doing it now. I'm doing it now. You know, like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, oh, you mean I just, just, he's more trying. I feel like yeah. I feel like it, it, it was more that facial expression was more accessible for Richard than it is for Marlon. Well, I think everyone copied Richard, including Marlon and, and, all, and a lot of comedians. We all. Uh, had no choice but to copy some stuff because Richard was the first one I think to do it like that, and so maybe obviously that was an influence because even Eddie does it. When you think about no, uh, I mean Eddie does it. I mean yeah. you see Dave Chappelle does it. They all do it. I mean he so he basically stole some of the writers from yeah. Richard Pryor's show. Basically sure. did his entire sketch show and called he it did. the Chappelle show, which is brilliant. It's yeah. a brilliant move. And then they hired a, a white guy as his writing. Uh, yeah, no, but he still got Paul Mooney who was the original writer on Richard show. Yeah, that's what right. right. So right, I mean yeah. it's not that's like right. he didn't pay any homage to. What he stole that from, but well, he can't. He, he is, can't say Key and Peele stole it from him when he's already stole no, no, from no. somebody else. Do you know about that? Yeah, he threw some shade. I thought that was unnecessary shade. I thought that was white. that was unnecessary shade to Key and Peele. Shout out to to Key, not Peele. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, he knows I don't what know he that did. motherfucker. <laughs> he knows what he did. No, but Key get all this, my dude. We did Jangle Jangle. Well, what Jangle Jangle, you know that is also, which is a great segue to how I met this guy. I met him on um. We were in England, mm, mm -hmm. across the pond. In Reading, yeah. Well, UK, technically, UK, the UK, the, the, the uh, what, whatever. whatever. That's how they sound over there. Uh, some chips and shit, mm -hmm. some chips anyway. and fish. Not yeah. shit because no, it's nasty. No. So, uh, we were in England, and like, uh, I was on set for Jingle Jangle, which is a show written, Jangle Jangle. Jangle. directed by the great David Talbert. David E. Talbert. David, David e. e. E stands for excellence. <laughs> <laughs> All right, get off his dick. He put you in a movie already. No, I, I no, 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 no. He's a good guy. Uh, <laughs> brilliant director. Love him to death. Uh, I want him. To, I want to keep working with him. And uh, he should come on the pot. He said, "But I ain't calling you, nigga." I'm <laughs> hey, no. 
But he uh, he he wrote that movie Jingle Jangle, a musical, and you got that the lead role. Well, you play younger. I play the young uh, lead, the younger right. version of Forrest Forrest Whitaker. Whitaker. That's right, Forrest Whitaker. Uh, so he's pretty much your dad now. He is my dad in this, yeah. you know, but mm-hmm. I don't I don't know, you know, um, whether the relationships uh, of our new film are to be exposed. But I'm just saying, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, but we're also yeah. in this new film. So this is our second film. That's together, crazy right? that you guys were on. and You had just met Forrest on Jingle Jangle. Yeah. And then how did and then you you immediately work with him again? I mean, immediately. He's got to be like, you, is, know, <laughs> you know, look, if Jingle Jangle came out in December. Right. Of 2020, um, of 2020. Yeah. Of November of 2020, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was working, then I would have been working with him by July of the next year. Right. How but, was that? But, but Jingle Jangle, but me, us finishing Jingle Jangle, I s- finished seeing him in June, February, March, 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 July. Yeah, it would have been um, like August. Of the year before, so it really what, was what, a couple years, one year, one year. Okay, really, well, like I see him in August of this year, and in August, and then next year I see him again. That's really quick. Yeah, to do that's two really movies quick with him. To yeah. do that two movies with uh with Forrest Whitaker. You know, you know Forrest Whitaker. Nah, he's I, he's I, a lesser I, known actor. I, I know, I know who he is. <laughs> yeah, I I've guess never met him. <laughs> yeah, no, he's a cool guy. I met him on set. Right. He was cool, but uh that was so you. He's so, a Black Panther. You got a connection. <laughs> the is. Black Panther will be washed away. Uh, no, he I mean, killed that. I, he I, killed that scene. That's my man. Wa- washed away. 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 Man, that's acting. My that's acting, my man. My uh, man. Ha, ha, ha. What was that movie that he was in where he's a ghost dog? A ghost dog. Sam Ryan. He had all the rules. Ghost dog? Yeah, ghost yeah. Dog. He kind of lived on the roof with pigeons. And, Wait, uh, he was a... He followed samurai he, rules in the hood. Well, but he was a human. Yeah. Okay. He wasn't a ghost dog. Actually. No, 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 no. He was right. a dog, but you never see him. Got it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because he lives by the samurai code. He's a samurai. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it must have been written by uh, Rizzo or something. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Good guess. Good guess. Let's look that up. Let's fact check. They actually, look, look this, it up. Look we don't, one thing we don't do with this podcast is spread inf- and misinformation. <laughs> I'm just we saying that the ways it's like it. in the fourth world of uh, the samurai. Uh, I was actually looking at your IMDb to see if I could figure out which was the one that the president uh, which one? tried to gonna, fuck you. You're going to end up naming them all. No, no, no. No, yeah, it's all right. Let, let, let the people figure it out for themselves. A fun Director little. and writer Jim Jarmusch. Ooh. Ah, and so inspired by RZA? No. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not seeing RZA listed. <laughs> see, RZA, RZA may be inspired by Ghost Dog. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, Jay, he's a good guy. Forrest Whitaker, talented dude. And, uh, but you, when, so how did you get the role? Let's back up because it was a big role, right? Jingle, jingle. Yeah, I mean, I guess it was. It wasn't really when I got it. Uh, so I you was, were like, ah, you know, this is whatever. No, I mean, listen, I, it really was kind of funny because um, I had two auditions that day. And the second one I really wanted, and the other one was a Christmas film. And, uh, and I said, oh, okay, Forrest Whitaker's in it, right? Mm. And I'm just like, but I'll never meet him because they just want me to be a younger version of him and maybe a time, uh, maybe like, a, you know, like a flashback then two seconds. And I thought it'd be a two week job. Right, right, right. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Right. That, that makes sense. And uh, so I was like, all right, two week job. It's not really going to be. I mean, it'll be cool. You know, meet fours maybe, you know, maybe in the thing. I've seen a lot of these flashbacks. You see kids play this shit all the time and you never right. see them again. Yeah. You know, just like a flashback, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like, what happened to the dude that played the flashback of... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, uh, <laughs> Nicolas uh, Cage and uh, <laughs> the Rain Man. I don't know. If I can... Yeah. He wasn't in that film, but he should have been. But, you know... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, he should have been. That would have been great. He should have been Rain Man, Nicolas Cage. That would have been great, yeah. But, yeah. No more Dustin Hoffman. He's out of here. Canceled. He's canceled. <laughs> get get him out of here. All right. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, no. So I um went to my buddy's house who taped all my auditions. He doesn't anymore. We talk about taping, but I basically do it now. But went over there. I taped the first audition. Felt real great about it. Yeah, I'm going to get this one. Mm-hmm. And the second one, he's like, oh, have you read the size yet? I'm like, oh, no. Nah. <laughs> I was just like, it's a Christmas one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I read, I read the lines, and I, I noticed that he like stole some stuff from Willy Wonka. I was just like, the way he phrased that is exactly how 
Gene Wilder said it from Willy Wonka. And I knew Willy Wonka because it was my favorite film. Yeah, shout out to Willy, Willy Wonka. And I was just like, hmm, this guy's stealing stuff from my favorite movie. Uh, I know exactly what he's trying to do here. So I didn't really feel like I had to study for it at all. So I picked up the sides and I just, and I li- and I read them and then I, you know, Hla! and then I jumped on camera and I did it. My my buddy gave me a really great note and, and I did it again a little bit more chipper you know what i mean because i think i was playing yeah. it a little too serious you know what i mean at right, first right. i went in there and i did a little more chipper and i was looking at that tape again i was like man it really the, what i did in the film and what i did on the tape ended up being really close really yeah that's great so you you nailed it and that's probably why he ain't but he didn't know because it's a musical right that's the thing about this movie just check it out it's i've, I've seen jingle jangle oh really you seen it? Yeah. oh oh well, my yeah. god no, well yeah. i'll tell you man i forgot to do a song what do you mean well, they wanted me to sing in the audition tape. And oh, I, said, and I only read yeah, the first part of the audition. And I you said, and it. then I just skipped down to the sides and read the sides. Didn't wow. even, you know, because I'm a lazy actor. And, and me too. I, yeah, I mean, the best are. <laughs> and, <right. laughs> and I didn't read that they needed me to sing. And so, oh, man. and so I didn't sing. And I just sent in the tape. And then they called me. Anyway, that's how good it was. And they were just yeah. like, wow, we, we like you. Can you sing? And I'm like, yeah, I, I can sing. Uh, you know, uh, I sent I sent them my my, mix, my demo tapes, my, my Spotify tapes. I sent them my tracks because I, I your, produce a lot of Spotify? music. What's your handle? Huh? Just, just say your spot so people can follow you. Oh, Justin Cornwell. If you just type in my name. Yeah, yeah. It yeah, pops right it up. Musical, but yeah. First Bieber pops up and, and then Guarini from season one of American Idol and then me. But then, right. <laughs> well, you're in good company. <laughs> you're in good. That's a good group. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the thing is that you know. So, but they they didn't know that you could sing. They they didn't know that I could sing because they didn't go to check out my musical my music page. Mm. So what ended up happening was that like, they set up a whole. And you skipped a part of the thing. The singing part. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so, <laughs> don't just blame it on The whole part where singing was a part of the audition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just They're like this guy is so confident in his singing ability. He's not even including it. Yeah, in you the negged tape. them. You negged your way. Yeah, I think so. If I would have sang in that audition, <laughs> they probably would have said, "Fuck!" This I wouldn't have got nigger. That's, that's what they would have exactly. said. Exactly, David. Being all black, he definitely would have called you. He's a black guy. He just those called me know. today. He just called me uh, a nigger. Da Vinci de Negro. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, I was as close. <laughs> Not Da Vinci. Uh, 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 what's his, what's his name? Picasso de Negro. Da Picasso de Negro. Because <laughs> you can, because you can draw. Because I that's can. Funny. I happen to illustrate. Yes. Well, you know, uh, that's not even the best part of the audition process for this show, for this movie. It's the, it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever done. What? Um, they were like, "Oh, sing for us." So I sang in in a Zoom with them and Harvey Mason and the whole gang, singing, "Oh uh, yeah," you know, singing something from mm-hmm. Hairspray. And then, um, oh yeah, yeah, I was just like run and tell that, and so then I sing run and tell that, do all that. Mm-hmm. Then they call me back and they say, hey, sing something else. <laughs> and so I'm singing something else, and they're like, yeah, we like you. David you know, calls me back for a private one just to sing something else, and I'm like, so all right, three zooms, I sing, I sing with David a private one. Everybody decides I, I think this is the guy, or whatever. But he still got to sing some more. So they sent me to Harvey what? Studio for the what yeah. I would call the final callback. And at this callback, I was like, "This, this is like fourth, the fourth callback." It 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 really is yeah. the fifth audition, fourth the, callback. Fifth right? audition, yeah, man. And this, so yeah. I go to the studio, and walking through the studio is is amazing. One and also intimidating too, because here's Aretha's plaque on the thing because she recorded in here. Yeah. Chris Brown did his album in there. Jagged Edge even had me nervous in there. And he only had one hit, but they was like, oh, my God, that's why you and my wife, he played at my wedding. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, <he did. laughs> of wow. course, you yeah. know, I'm from the 90s. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm born in the 80s, which means I I'm actually remember the 90s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I remember a little bit of it. 90s kids are 2000s kids. They are, that's, that's fair. You know what I mean? Yeah, 80s kids are 90s kids. That's fair. Yeah, 90s right. kids what, are What year were you born? 88. So, my brother. so by the time I got to ninety four or five, I was conscious. I was like seven years old. You know yeah, what I mean? I was too 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 young. But I remember the fuck out of like 
2001. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> listen, I was already programming yeah. computers in 2001. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> I was over here like, why? This is not why 2K isn't going to happen. Everybody's <laughs> freaking out. I'm just like, you guys are stupid. Yeah, yeah. Probably also because of the the obviously 2001 was a year that Jay Z released the blueprint. Hmm. So, but I knew all the words to Willennium. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I feel Here like, it comes another year. I'm not going to out myself this way. I feel like something else happened. <laughs> I feel, that's hilarious. I feel like something else happened. What else happened in 2001? Nothing. Uh, yeah, 9 11. That's not That's not it. That's no. not right. Britney Spears shaved her head that year. Did she? I think no. so. No, that was way later. It's got to be way later. Are you sure? Let's look it up. Let's fact check, man. We don't misinform people on this podcast. I know there's been... We, I've done a couple other podcasts where I might have said some things that maybe uh, were true, maybe were like not, not true. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I'm trying to be better. And so we're going to fact what check. What year was 9 I think it was like 98. <laughs> no. <laughs> it was 2001, wasn't it? Mm, no, I don't think so. Let's just look it up. Let's look it up. We yeah, what year that. was 9 11? Yeah, yeah, this is, yeah mm-hmm. we're, we're supposed to never forget this. I mean, it was in seventh grade for me. Yeah, yeah, 2000, yeah. 2001, or 2002 was one or the other. Uh, 1998, Trey was correct. No. 9 11, 1998? 9 11, 1998. 1998, there it is. Why do you lie? Said, why we, are we, you we lying just, this way? We, we just fucking with you. <laughs> <laughs> Brit- yeah, well, Brit- Britney Spears shaved her head in 2007. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, okay, 2007. Right. I was just like, yeah, Britney Spears. Yeah. Nah. But wait a minute. But so, 9-11, though. 9-11 no, but, was 2007. 9/11, <laughs> it was 2001. It was 2001. Like, did we something else happen in 2001? You mean like, uh, you know, yeah. 9-11? We had, our own, uh, <laughs> we had our own Ukraine. We pulled a Putin but before it was a Putin. Did we? Well, we went into Afghanistan. I mean, I guess we had, le- well, we didn't have a legitimate reason to go and Well, we didn't, then we didn't do what Putin did because now we gave it back to ISIS. Uh, well, you know, well, Putin is just, he, he's doing what we did in, as far as invading a country illegally. We'll see how it works. Yeah, but he's over here invading the country illegally and it looks like it hopes to actually occupy the country and bring it into Russia, which we That's knew right. he wanted to do this whole time. But, right. you know, Russia's agenda, they always, you know, wanted Ukraine, but... We weren't trying to occupy Afghanistan. We didn't want to make Afghanistan the we was 51st to, state. Yeah, well, ain't nobody trying to put that nigga in Alaska now. Like we over here in the <laughs> ununited states over here. You know, maybe what I mean? <laughs> that's pretty much. Isn't that pretty much what our territory becomes? Just uh, like, like we what don't the hell want is, no more. We don't want nothing else. We with Canada gonna be. Can, we don't even want whatever Mexico down there. We don't I, want nothing else. See, I think they want everything. Right? They want to open the borders. They want to get rid of everything and and have us just going around. Jerking each other off. Who wants to open the borders? Uh, the that? Democrats. Uh, what? Yeah, they do. Nobody wants to open the borders. Yeah, they yeah, they yeah. say Joe they Biden. They say they want to open the borders, but really, what they want to do is make you feel comfortable, so they could do the thing that actually makes capitalism work. What? What's that? <laughs> and that is protecting America's interest and in making us fear stuff, so we can spend more money on shit we don't need. Yeah, I mean, I think they do. They they make m- money. Wars make money for everybody. Which go back to Raytheon. <laughs> this is, you know, they're a good good company over there. But like, it's important, uh, I think, to recognize that. And so, it's always going to happen. Yeah, it's just we, we have capitalism. we have territories that are not states, though. We we have done the yeah, annex I mean, we got, other places. We got yeah. Puerto Rico over there, right? Well, American Samoa, right? Still, even parts, so, we still have parts of the Philippines. But even so, okay. So, the intention behind the illegal invasion of Afghanistan and Ukraine are different. It's different, but it's still a legal invasion. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Are you saying it's well, an illegal, or are you saying it's illegal? I think it should be legal, but it's illegal. Does He's the, illegally does the reports of invading does other the countries, reports but of it should be legal uh, against um, people of color in the Ukraine. Um, does it make you weary of supporting the country? Wait, say that again. Does the reports of discrimination against people of color in Ukraine in the Ukraine right now does it make you um, weary of supporting um, their? I didn't the really hear any reports of that. Do you know? What are you talking about? I yeah. know that there was like a Nazi government or something 
or some of the people I don't might know have been if, Nazis. I don't know how rampant racism is in the Ukraine, but I mean, if Probably it's tribalism, so bad. white people are gonna be white, <laughs> black people are gonna be black. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's not it's not much better in Russia. Would be my response to that. No, it's Hell not. No. But 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 just keep it on Ukraine though. They are in the government, racist people. Yeah, I mean, yeah, okay. I mean, of course, right? Well, there, <laughs> there's a there's a well, there's there? a there's yeah. a minority party that is national socialist. Got it. Yeah, right. yeah. It's tough, man. But you know, uh, racism is everywhere. You know where it was. But going back to England, the racism over in England when I was over there mm. uh, was it just felt better. Does yeah. that make sense? I think it's more classes. Have you been over there, England? Yeah. Is it? It's yeah. Uh, well, it's just because I don't know. Maybe it's because like there's more. There's so many different everything over there. It's like it's hard to really be racist. So there's racism for sure, but there's still more culture. <laughs> I mean, it's funny, you though. Know? I was in France, though, and I go to this club, and this big-ass bouncer's out front, and he's, like, Nigerian, and he goes, how you doing tonight, black man? I'm like, am we in France? Why do you sound like he's British? <laughs> <laughs> I think what about this though if you're in England if you're in England and you're meeting people they're meeting to them a black American guy that's true right yeah as opposed to they they are still extremely racist towards like Pakistanis mm. because over there Pakistanis well I mean Pakistani is kind of more fulfilled like wh- how we think of Mexicans in the United States as I know that I know that that exists, but as a whole, they're more. Remember when it's come time for some tacos or some Mexican <laughs> food? We love Mexicans. Yeah, yeah, they're great. As a whole, I think there's just more uh, because Europe is laid out the way it is. People are traveling, coming and going. I know that there's like hardcore racism for sure, or like Algerians. In mm-hmm. if you're Algerian and you're in but France, that's very. I think similar for the to most them. part, if you look at the poor over there. More poor people in in the UK uh, understand race a little bit more. It's like you know what I mean. It's like poor people in America were like way more racist than poor people in mm. the UK. I think it's because in America, every poor person it's like every pine can become a queen. <laughs> every <laughs> every poor person be like, no, nah, but I'm gonna be rich one day, so I'm yeah, gonna get yeah. my racism ready. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. When it happens, I can't Let's wait. Get it going. <laughs> I mean, racism in in Reconstruction Era South was a method of preventing black, poor blacks and poor whites from achieving class consciousness exactly. with each other. That's why they killed because, and that never happened over there in England, right? So it's it's different. That's why too, America. I did realize when I was over there that we do focus on race a lot, maybe to our detriment sometimes, especially as black people, because that's how they manipulate us. Mm-hmm. They make us fo- focus on race. Meanwhile, they do some bullshit. I mean, you know, the Democrats do that all the time. I mean, look, you know, if you watched the Fred Hampton, I was writing my own Fred Hampton script before that last That's film right, came yeah. out. And there was a, a large part of that that I wish we could talk more about. I wish it was more cinematic to, to show. Mm. Uh, but then you just realize that the history is more important than than finding a cinematic angle to shoot it. Yeah. As you're trying to, to, to mine it for great information. And then you, you, you realize, like, if you just think about the Rainbow Coalition, you can go online and out and you can find videos of some of these Black Panthers going into all white neighborhoods where they're waving the Confederate flag, talking about, hey, listen, we're playing the same taxes for the same cops to be our ass uptown and downtown. Yeah. We're all poor. We got the same rats, the same roaches. Why are we fighting each other and fighting for them against us when really they're treating y'all just like they're treating us but Absolutely. just in separate sections yeah you know what i mean we came down here and then and then you hear the the white the right crowd talking about oh they they beat my cousin willie outside the out the, out the convenience store he wasn't doing nothing yeah. oh yeah and they they just hit me upside my head and i wasn't doing nothing and i was yeah. just like as you see and then that's what they were killing fred hampton for they were killing fred hampton because he was uniting the poor people together against the corrupt government. It and, was, and and that's that is where they kill you every single time. Fred, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King. They all made a shift to unifying more than dividing. And that's the thing. Even Malcolm X, like you said at the end, like when he was just like when he was preaching separatism and all this stuff. Yeah. They were just like, yeah, go ahead, Malcolm. <laughs> go <laughs> exactly. ahead. Yeah. Exactly. Why don't was... you come on this program and tell us all how you feel? They were, they were, yeah, learning. you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, but as soon as he's talking about, man, I was wrong, I see the light, we got to come together and stop right. this bullshit. No, nigga. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> That's why I want. Yeah, he say went it. to Mecca and then he came came back and he's like, everybody's my brother. And they're like, okay, now we <laughs> need to kill like, him. Oh, damn. Name. Yeah, Patrice has a great bit. Can't about make that. no money. Yeah, you know Patrice O'Neill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, great. Yeah, point. yeah. But it's like what you said with Fred R. and R. how you can point time and time again. Even yeah, I, I'd say JFK, even though he's not black. I think he was trying to unify more than he was trying to divide. I mean, yeah. I mean, and they got that. Nigga. I mean, yeah, definitely right. RFK. Yes. Well, I Absolutely. mean, look, even with Absolutely. Robert too. Yeah. I think that you know, I, I think there was something that they were there was a stickler on the really kind of discriminatory speech he made. But I mean, he was also out there trying to do the yeah, same thing. He's, he's, Racism, you know, I mean, I mean, you know, the racism was more casual, but it was like, listen, I can see my own racist ways. I'm still going to act Mm -hmm. in a way that I know is right, Mm -hmm. even though I ain't the best person in the world. (laughs) You know what I mean? (laughs) And I think, I think, I don't like black people. You don't like black people. Oh, I like black people. Oh, I don't like them. But they should still be able to vote. That's just kind of that's how I think about Lincoln. And that is, but that is like, let's. To me, that's brilliant politics, right? Because so, it's like, you can't argue with that. This is like, listen, you're telling me that I can make more money if I just sell it to these 100,000 people over here? Oh, yeah, but if you sell it to those 100,000 people over there, then then uh, then we'll see you as liking them. Yeah. Word, but I'll be rich, though, right? <laughs> do, do, yeah. do, do, do. Man. It's Who's a- not going to take that ticket? We There was too Everyone. many of us. We were controlling so much energy in the world. By that time, man, you know what I mean? Look, I think about Lincoln because he was like, I, I guess we could send him to the Indies. You know what I mean? Uh, well, wait, maybe that won't work. <laughs> but it, it was a good guess. I tried, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's like, I changed my stance on that one. Well, that goes all the way back to Liberia. Yeah. That's yeah. where Liberia came from. Yeah, exactly. Oh, really? Yeah. They wanted to send them back there, but it wasn't like, it was like, yeah, send them back to Africa. It was more like, well, you know, white people... We've worked so hard for this land. <laughs> <laughs> they have. That's that's facts. We, that's facts. <laughs> so it's ours, you know. Yeah. But we can give y'all some land over there mm. if you like. We we're probably going to and take that in a hundred years, but uh, you know. Oh, you're going to send us back to our ancestral lands where the tribes that we were taken from, where our ancestors were taken from? No, 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 no. We're just going to put you on the oh, same no. continent, yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of in the same yeah, we area. We can't really take in you the back there vicinity. to the to the land where you came from because you know they sold it to you, sold sold it to you for for a good price. So they don't want you back. It's it, you know <laughs> it's it, 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 uh, uh, it's like that that uh, uh, that funny meme it was like we can't do this. But, you know, all I can do is, what's Pawn Stars? I think it's like from Pawn uh, Stars. Pawn Stars, where it's like, yeah, I can't do. <laughs> Best yeah. I can do is Liberia. Best I can do is, is <laughs> Liberia. Well, here's the thing is, I think, uh, but what, so that's a, that's, it's, that's interesting because do you think that would have been the right move to send everyone, just give us a, a one-way ticket back? Why? So we can end up like Haiti? I mean, <laughs> I think I do like the way it ended up for me, but a lot of people had to suffer. You know, I think a lot of people had to suffer for yeah. us to be talking shit on a podcast. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just... Shout it's, out to Joe Rogan. I mean, shout out to <laughs> old bald, you know, Roy Mr. Clean, dude. But he's clean. He is. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Listen, but, everybody tried to get him with the nigger stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was hilarious. Because I, like, remember half of it those segments where they, where they stole it from. And I had no problem when I watched the segments. Now I'm supposed to have a problem with it. Now that I see the segment... Out of context, I was like, I know what segment that's from. He was but talking man, to a black guy. I'm telling you, that is what <laughs> that is what. And now, obviously, he shouldn't have. A lot of people will say he just shouldn't have said it in any context. But I'll tell you, the context does matter because he wasn't. If somebody is saying the n word and they're repeating somebody else, that's a different context. Bruh, I'm an actor. Than somebody. So you're gonna say, but there's a lot. Leonardo <laughs> Leonardo killed the n word in uh, De Django, and we love that shit. And he killed that. But shit, listen, man. I just went to go see Slave Play last night. It's yeah. playing over at the um, oh, really? Mark Taper Theater, the Mark Taper Forum downtown, Damn. right? You don't have to go see it, audience, but literally they they literally they come out they come out talking about um, just to ruin the play for everybody, and they come out talking about oh niggers and like they're like yeah. doing this race play, mm-hmm. yeah, right? Man, think about it. Like, listen, I I did this play. It was yeah. a, a star Detroit Six Sevens back in Chicago. It's about black people yeah. during the Chicago. I mean, during Detroit riots, right? Mm. And they're over here, um, nigga this, nigga that, right? And then somebody like dropped their line. <laughs> line was well, so the stage manager is white, and you niggers better not come back. 
<laughs> and, then, and then, and then, the, he's the only white person in the room. It says niggers real hard. You think, now you think they fucking had their line, or you think they were like, "I'm gonna make this white boy." No. <laughs> As an actor, that was the first nigger. time I was like, and yeah. I looked around. I said, "He said," and then I looked around. It's all black people, and this one white guy giving the lines, and I was just like, and no one cared. Well, because it was not, it was inappropriate context, right? It was inappropriate exactly. Because con- we are in the smarter. Context. We are smarter than they make than they want us to be, and that's it. Goes back to how we get manipulated by race, because it's right, like, exactly, yeah, right. It's like, but but all right, we get it. We get but it if context. you had one thug up in there, he would have punched the stage manager in the yeah. head. Yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> Talk about yeah. what? I'll say, say nigga one more time, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> right. And but that's just hilarious, though. But so that's one of the. Very few times where it's just appropriate. I think for somebody. To listen, say that that's word. exactly. I think context is big, and the thing about America is we lose context in tweets and memes. You know what I mean? You lose context. Yeah, yeah. The thing yeah. about it is, I engage with it because I love presenting shit out of context. Well, acting is fine. <laughs> I, I think acting. Any anybody mad at somebody saying the n word, and it's like a movie. It's a scene. It's like, are you stupid? This is make believe. It's not real. <laughs> I, he, I know. he wasn't I mean, d- just to be fair though, like or be accurate. He wasn't saying it as like part of a uh, a scene in a movie who? or anything like that. Joe Rogan. Rogan. Oh no, I've moved away from. from oh okay. Joe. Well, I, now I'm just talking you're, about you're talking about the Leonardo are, DiCaprio. Leonardo. Thing. People got mad at Leo in Did the movie. Yeah, at Joe was like. No, I don't think. I think maybe a couple people. I've heard, I mean, they I've hated heard his character. Was mad, despicable though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think, uh, you know. That's if no one got mad at him, then that is a perfect. I think that's a perfect example of well, okay. Sometimes it's appropriate for a white guy to say the N word. I'm not saying Joe Rogan was you know was appropriate at all, but I'm not mad at what he used. It was more the obviously the Planet of the Apes thing. That was yeah, hilarious. you damn dirty. That was hilarious. That's what he said. Were... Joe Rogan, you damn dirty nigger <laughs> apes. <laughs> that's an actual quote. Listen, uh, I I still think he's funny. Great guy. But um, <laughs> no, I'll break I, bread I, with him and he invites me to the podcast. Mm-hmm. I'll do it. Man. I'll be there. Uh, you know he's a good guy. But uh, I, I mean it's 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 lower production than this. For sure, this is like top notch. But also, this is the best. so we have a, as black people, we have a tendency to accept racism here and not take it over here. So it's mm. like with Joe Biden, for instance, mm. you can see any racist clip of him saying. Not just the N word in appropriate tech, you know, it was context, but still he says it and he said Freudian slips, just like how Joe you ain't was, black. Yeah, you ain't black. <laughs> so it's like Joe Joe Biden literally displays some of the same ignorant racism. It's I believe. bad. Listen, the way he said ain't and you ain't black was racist. You ain't black. <laughs> And the way he's the, like, and if he, you don't vote for me, yeah. you ain't black. Like, yeah, yeah, ain't, yeah. like, not ain't, like, like, ain't, like, you know how you say ain't when you, yeah, yeah. you black? Yeah, I love, I, Joe I, was hanging, mm, Joe. Well, I love the, because he just, he, <laughs> the smirk after he said it, too. And he like, goes, yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, you know, Charlemagne, <laughs> he did a good job, I guess. You know, <sighs> Man, that. Charlemagne be killing me, though. He be going soft on some people and then too hard on other people. I'm like, oh, grill him. Well, I, uh, oh, yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm I guess like, maybe dang. some people are like he's friends with and some people he just doesn't give a fuck. Exactly, bro. Listen, they can't go in unless you got, oh, I'm somewhere. I got something over him or something like that. Yeah, yeah. But. I think part of the problem is that, so I, I I never say it, even in quoting. You've never said it? No, no, I have said it, but I- When have you I, said it? I, Why? I, Did you take a big, just, like, breath after and- <laughs> Did you say- <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> Did you walk outside and you smoke no, no, no. a cigarette? No, I, because I, 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 I used to think that, I used to think- <laughs> No, I just Woo! went went into went into the sound booth and just yeah. top of my lungs. Get that Nobody out of my chest. Oh, God. Just gotta do it. It's like recording. <laughs> it's like primal scream therapy. Hey, shit, no, 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 no. No, that's me. You don't want to hear mean, what I say when I'm alone. It, when I when I was younger, I thought that there were certain contexts where yeah. it was okay or whatever. And now well, there, there is. Well, but, but it's not very common. But there are. Now I don't even want to. Allude it's to it, it's yeah. easier for me to just have that hard line of just I don't ever say well, that's it. That's because you're a good person. Because then, then, then I don't want a Freudian slip where I. <laughs> but you, you know. can't help that sometimes. I mean, if you think <laughs> black people have a different mind or sm- poor kids is just what about poor kids are just as smart as uh, white kids? 
Mm. You remember that? Yeah, Joe that Biden. Was bad. Yeah, but that oh, yeah, shows yeah, yeah, yeah. you. But, but just like that shows Mitch you, uh, there's a was just thinking. Like, Who? Talk, Mitch McConnell just recently said something about, course. and he goes, he's a, he's a black people as well as Americans. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> I was like, can uh, we find that? Both yes, ty- please. Both, both types of can people, we watch black that? people in America. Yeah, find yeah, that. Yeah. Find that. Can we, the, can you the, find the Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell. Uh, Shout out to Mitch, good friend of the show. Oh people my gosh. Come, I know I'm from Mitch, Kentucky. Man. You know, I'm proud to be a, a, so, a Kentuckian. What's up really, with your so boy, I, know I got Mitch McConnell on my side. What's up with your boy, Mitch, man? Uh, Mitch, why Mitch. is he such a fucking Goblin uh, sexy god? Uh, you know, he's a sex symbol, Mitch. I mean, he's throwing me. He's throwing me like. God level, God, God mode, Bob Barker. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> He's giving me God, God mode, Bob Barker. You feel me? Like but, uh, <laughs> you're. <laughs> it's you're... like if Bob Barker went all like he's Piccolo and this nigga Kami. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! The, you know, that's the two parts of Mitch McConnell. Man, I th- yeah. Well, I love the I, I love the reference. I mean, you know. I think, uh, yeah, what's your yeah Kentucky, that's a, with, color, is, is that like a fun without place? Without John Alvarez voting oh, yeah. act, they're not going to be able to vote in the midterm. Well, the concern is misplaced because if you look at the statistics, African-American voters are voting in just as high a percentage as Americans. A recent survey, uh, 94% of Americans thought it was easy to vote. Uh, this is not a problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, and and you know, my man said as well he as those Americans do. They're they're voting just as much as Americans, and he's like, we got to stop it. Like yeah. he's that, he, knew it. he knew what he was saying. I'm he's sick like, of it. He's yeah, just like, yeah, it's not true because it's not working. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. know these for effects. The numbers are there. Yeah, that's why they, they turned they're, Georgia they're, blue. They did, and uh, well, you know, and and uh, we'll see if it stays that way. But I think voting is a weird thing because you know people say do it because people died for your right to do it but my i what what i would like to see is something for our vote right like the reason joe biden to be honest jokes aside the reason he said that don't vote for me or you ain't black i know it was joke but it was also the democratic party knows that they got us like in a vice grip by the balls and so it's like where are we gonna go you know when he said that though i was triggered I was triggered because yeah, well, I was called white triggered. growing up. You were. I was. In I Kentucky. was I, in Kentucky. There was, was like, oh, you the whitest people? black kid I know. Were there and other black shit. people in Kentucky? No. Yes, there was. How many? There's lots of black people in Kentucky. Really? Yeah, man. How do wow. you think was running okay. them plantations? <laughs> so, do you think they had money to leave? Wait, so yeah, okay. not everybody could escape. Right. That's true. <laughs> a lot of people did not. So, so, so other black kids. You went to a black school? No. You went to a white. School. I went to a white school. Well, where did these black people say that you were? No, white, white kids said this. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> white kids. Was white like, kids no, told you me you're the whitest, whitest black kid I know. Well, they would kids. know. They would know exactly. They right, would right, know, right. But, but but white but white was a measure of intelligence. So if you spoke with diction, or if you talked, or if you did computer science, you're white. Which goes to the <laughs> which goes to the underground. I hate to admit it, but there is a such thing as uh, white supremacy. Uh, see. I did admit it because it exists. Uh, <laughs> it pains me to admit that, but like the the white supremacist way of thinking. Are they supreme though? No, but that's the way of thinking is that they are. They want us to think they are, and so the perception of smart. You're white because you're smart right. because black is dumb. Well, that's exactly what um what happens though is that when you say oh white is this and black is that. If you're a white dude telling me I'm not black if I don't do this, it feels like the same thing with white people telling me that I'm more white if I do this. Yeah, it's it's triggering for me because suddenly I'm like, oh my gosh, it's, it's I'm that I'm that kid all over again now. Now you're telling me how to act my race. It's so which is like, uh, it, it that's a I hate that's a form of racism where it's like I prefer the other one where you just called me an, the n word. You know what I mean? I mean, like, listen, that's why I mean, look, Kentucky was good for that. I, yeah. I would love an old ver- you know, just a drive by niggering nigga. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then, and then they, you can hear them giggling. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we got him. You well, know, you know, know. Dr- nothing wrong with drive by <laughs> nigga. Nothing wrong. The, with you that, know, man. back in those days, I felt like ah, there is those racist. You well, know what like, I mean? I and think I'll be have a bunch of white, but be with a bunch of white friends. Yeah, P- Patrice and I believe Chappelle uh, both 
said something like, yeah, they want to open racism, you know. Uh, uh, and, and But they're right when they say that because we, I would prefer it open, not the covert racism of like, yeah, you know, poor kids uh, are black and they're voting too much. You know what I mean? It's just kind of like. It's, it sucks, man. It's, yeah. It feels like, uh, I mean, it is an attack, uh, yeah. but it's an attack on our psyche as well as our bodies, man. You know what I mean? So we're getting it on two fronts. We're getting that attack on our psychological and then we're being and then we're forced to watch black uh, uh, young people being killed in the streets on, on an almost daily basis uh, on our social media feeds. What used to be cat videos and, and our friends, you know, lunch and stuff like that is now just uh, black people getting shot. So, I mean, that that's just, a, that, you know. You remember just, when that was a, a week straight? Yeah. A new was, black was person very, was murdered by the cops? What yeah. was that? It was like. It's psychological warfare. That was a crazy week, man. And that was under Obama. Thanks a lot, Obama. <laughs> Listen, man. I mean, he didn't kill anybody, but but the you know, the, you know, he brought out he brought out the ragers. Yeah. When it came to race raging, these people I think were triggered by seeing they were Obama. A black man. Yeah. Which gave him a lot of cover. Yeah, so we yeah. can't actually criticize Obama from the left as black people. It's hard. <clears throat> Because we're is, so used to defending him. He had to go through so much racist racism. People. The fact that he was a covert Republican. And he said it. Can we bring up that clip of Obama saying that? You, you know what I'm talking about? No. So you're just aware that his policy makes him. Uh, right. Yeah. But yeah. he actually says, uh, uh, and I think I texted you, Rob, one time. But maybe if you can find a clip of when Obama admits he's a Republican. Uh, I think but it might be here. I think yeah. he, so he, he probably he, he says it in jest. To be honest with you, though. No, no, no. He's saying it. He's saying it like we'll, we'll, we'll listen to it. But I believe he's saying it like as this is how racist Republicans are. Or this is how dumb Republicans are. I'm saying shit that they should believe that they would vote for. It. Oh, right. I don't think that's what he's saying. Play I, it. Well, play it. But yeah, play it because that's exactly what he's saying. Those, uh, Americans who believe that. The truth of the matter is, is that. Uh, my policies are so mainstream that, you know, if if I had said the same policies that I have back in the 1980s, uh, I'd be considered a moderate Republican. I mean, Man, he, he's, he's just saying it, the time was different in 1980s, though. You know what I mean? But he, but what he's saying showcases how far the Democrats have moved right, because he was able to be such a liberal, progressive guy. He was the best, most progressive president, but that's just more of how center right the well, I mean, I think I think all the parties are kind of silly because they're being controlled to gradually think this way, this way, this way, this way. I mean, look, them Democrats were Republicans and it they basically were. flipped. It's all, well, AOC once said something that was so real and so true, which is, you know, sometimes she's, she's saying gibberish, but then a lot of the time she's like on point, you know? And so it just is a matter of, I guess, you know, if she's, if she's like on a good day, but, like, one of the things where she said, I was like, damn, I can't believe she said that. And I wish I would see her be more real. But lately, it's just kind of like, I think she's kind of given in or it just seems like she's not as outspoken. But what, she said that if this was any other country, she was referring to Joe Biden. Do you know what I'm saying? She said that we wouldn't even be in the same party. She's referring to her and Joe Biden. Yeah, so that's, that's true. Is 100 percent true. We don't even really have a left party in this country. We think it's the Democrats. That's all we got. Right, right, right. So we have right and moderate. And, Absolutely. and uh, that's what Obama was saying. And right, right. And we have the green and we have independent. Yeah. But all of these aren't organizational parties in a way that we think of them. We need tribalism. Right. And red and blue just does it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's the difference between Blood so and soccer and football. Yeah. Right. It's like soccer. You have a bunch of different leagues and there's not necessarily a championship game. Mm -hmm. People can follow their own team and they can go in between Premier League or Champions League, et cetera. Over in, in America, we just want like, no, it's just there's a Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. And yeah. it's one game. That's it. Two yeah. teams. One of them wins. How can I make my lose. bracket with all these leagues? You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> and that's I think that's game. the thing was we need a winner. and We need losers. And that's a binary system. You know what I mean? Do we? I, I I think I believe that some people think that we can eliminate losers completely, but I don't think we can. Well, not in a capitalistic society. It's going to be very hard to. Is there any society? I don't. I, is there any society that would eliminate losers? 
I don't. What, what do you mean is. eliminate losers? Sharia law. So <laughs> maybe that's probably they're, they're probably the closest. So I no, guess I'm just kidding. What no, I, no, don't take me seriously. What I mean, yeah, you you don't want to lose your uh, yeah. stuff. Uh, <laughs> uh, we can edit that out. Uh, no, we'll keep keeping it. It's all, it's, this it's episode all, is it's brought to you by yeah. Sharia Law. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Another sponsor. They keep at they're calling as we go. That's how hot. Cannot cancel us. We're uncancelable. <laughs> anytime that's uncancelable. Any, yeah. Anytime they come for us, we just get a new sponsor. <laughs> that's right, exactly. Man. Raytheon, Mitch McConnell, yeah, right. Sharia Law. Yeah. But I think uh, my sex toys pretty soon. Damn. What, what was I saying? Uh, I was asking, what do you mean by losers. a society without losers? Right. Oh, I think what I mean is kind of like a utopia of sorts. I think where that's there's what no poor people. There's no hungry. That's what communism tried to create. But I think all of that eats itself in the end. Well, I think so. I think everything can eat itself in the end. I think communism can. I think capitalism can and is. But also what we're doing right now isn't even real capitalism. No, it actually is. a. There is forms of communism in the capitalistic society. It's almost like yeah. communism to combat the capitalism. So it's like, hey, look. Yeah. Everybody, you, you you can go off and make all of your own money, and yes, that means you are going to have to take it from somebody else. But look, we have programs that help make social, you know, program programs that help society, like Social Security and, and and Medicare and all these other, which was all done by one guy. They called him a crazy socialist. Well, I think Social Security and Medicare, <clears throat> FDR, right? He did that. So Security was FDR. I'll look it up. I what? think he did Medicaid. But uh, yeah, uh, Frank, you know Franklin D, my man, uh, good friend of the pod. And it wasn't uh, Reagan. <laughs> no, it wasn't no, Reagan. Franklin D. Roosevelt, uh, Social Security, um, right. Medicare, and Medicaid were made by somebody else. Let me see. What did he do? I know he passed a bunch of shit, but the fact that like Social Security, uh, he was Reagan. able to 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 pa- to do that and con- take control of government and pass something that like was a safety net, and it actually turned out people liked it, and people are afraid of socialism. But it's like sometimes, in a in a free market, you need socialism to 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 balance it out. I think that's what it is. Yeah. I think that there um, a, some amount of socialism to balance out the free market works because there's going to be people just, who are extreme losers in in, a free, in the free market like this. Yeah, and there ha- and there has to be something to help the people at the lowest rung. But what I'm tired of seeing is a supposed. Um, position in the lowest rung based on some attribute you have no control over like your skin color yeah you know what i mean uh lyndon b johnson uh signed medicaid. into law medicare and medicaid and right. was that his idea or was that jfk was he just pushing what jfk wanted to do because um, I, I, I know he did that like once jfk died lyndon was like ah, we, we'll give you our one ah. <laughs> well he did civil rights right so it, go, it goes all the way back to uh truman mm. wanted a Basically, basically, like a national health care system based off of like a single payer fund, and right. then that eventually got turned into twenty years later into what became Medicare and Medicaid. Got it. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Well, what's interesting too about that's gonna be going when we you know, <laughs> <laughs> we ain't gonna get none of that shit. So we're on contract duty and you know, I, we're not I, making no money. I, what, one thing I want to point <laughs> out though, like I, I think terminology wise, this is. He's he's not being picked up on your microphones, but definitely on my microphone. Uh, capitalism is where a, a smaller, a minority of the people own the means of production, right? And then you have markets. You can have markets in a socialist system. A lot of times, people are talking about, are think they're talking about capitalism when they're talking about markets. Mm-hmm. And we still have a capitalist system because most people. Like there, most of the means of production, most property is owned by a very small subset of the population. Whereas, and and then in order to try to tamp down some of the negative effects of that, like people starving to death in the streets or freezing to death in winter, yeah. we have social programs. But right. that's not socialism because that's not. It's not socialism. No, you're right. It's not socialism. It's just social programs. The, but that that they they call it that to make yeah. people. But but you know so to scare shit out of people. Yeah, but it's like we got to get past all that shit, man. Words. Uh, one of the uh, greatest moments I, I saw of Bernie was Bernie's. Uh, you know Bernie Sanders. Yeah, I, I've he heard did of him. A, uh, Colonel Sanders. Yeah, yeah, the, the the Kentucky Fried Chicken guy. He ran oh, for yeah. president. 
Oh, he, he came did? as close. Oh man, no. uh, no, he's racist. He he he. The Democratic Party slit his throat. <laughs> yeah, and uh, this fucking. But one, he did a. Don't uh, touch it while you're talking. He this did is a solidarity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 he did a um a, a town hall for Fox News, and um, and he got so many applause breaks that I th- it even uh shook the the uh, moderators, you know. And I think that shows you that when you take the the word and the scary boogeyman away and just look at the guy, because Bernie's biggest uh, uh, the reason why he's anything, his his biggest superpower is is he just air focuses on policy, mm-hmm. and so he just he removes. There's no character, there's no fancy. It's just policy. And when he said it to that audience on Fox News, they were like, "Yeah, I don't want to pay more for insulin." Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, I, you know what I mean. So it's like these are these are crazy things. These are not crazy things that they make into like oh crazy policy. Yeah, I mean that's the only way you can spin it. How do you spin a good thing? Yeah, make <laughs> so make thing. people do the bad thing. Yeah. I mean it's kind of like I was watching Don't Look Up. It wasn't my favorite movie, but it was a moment <laughs> at the end where where Jonah Hill's character was just like. No, no, there is no comic coming. Look here, band plan, blah, 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 blah. and then you know the doom is impending, and so it's just yeah. kind of like yeah, yeah. that, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that was that was that was uh, critics ca- called that movie a movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, they like it. <laughs> content for it was content. 2022. Yeah, yeah, they, they, <laughs> there's award buzz for it. it yeah, yeah, it was a lot of people in that movie. Yes, yes, it's like but, this uh, is premium. No, I get thing it. Thing on TV. I get it. You know, people are uh, Jennifer Lawrence is hot, so I'm not mad at, at that. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know into what and, you're into. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you don't Race touch. Trader. You don't touch white people, <laughs> man. And we'll get into that. No, that's not true. You're I, a pure black man. I mean, married I'm, to a beautiful black. Of course, of course. Queen. No, I love white people. I've had lots of white girls. Have you ever had a white? You have had a white girlfriend. Yeah. Well, when does your wife know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. And she still married you. She's disgusted. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. She's had a lot of white, actually not, like one white dude. Okay, yeah. So, but you weren't, because there are these black people that are like, never, you know what I mean? I would never cross. Well, you know, I came from Kentucky where, you know, um, in proximity, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? I guess would be um, a lot of white girls. But I was like, hey, you know, they were nice to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh and uh, it wasn't Listen, just white girls; it was a lot of girls, man. Women, like a, that's the thing, man. I'm married Stop. now, so I don't care. But you know what I mean. And and you end up with a <laughs> you ended up with a black woman. That's all that matters. But it's like when we're single, let us have fun. Hey, black women, calm down. We'll get to you. All right. But when let us have on, some we fun. We might come back to you. That's what. But Kanye a lot of us don't said. come back. A lot yeah. of us don't come back. Yeah, it's unfortunate because thing. we get caught up. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And then we get caught up, and then we get our heart broken, and then you're always searching for Kim. You're right. I and, and I'm I'm I I've been single and so I've I've dipped my toe in the white girls and I don't it's like I I can see how you can drown quickly. I mean, it's like I mean, listen man, listen. The thing about black women that you're going to need to know is that they're going to challenge you more because they believe in you that there's more in you. That's great. I want it I, no matter who I'm with, I want them to challenge me. And I think black women, we share a similar uh, uh, background, so we're automatically going to connect on a whole nother level. Right, yeah, you can be racist together. Stuff, right. We can be racist against white people. Yeah, together. exactly. You can't do that with <laughs> white people. Then It's always an educational moment when exactly. you guys are at home. Or yeah. unless you guys are just <laughs> <laughs> unless you guys are just racist. Now is shit. my time to listen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the Let me tell you why what, what you did. <laughs> I just came slave play, so this is fresh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you you heard it here first. Don't go see. I didn't slave. say don't. I said you don't have to. That's a great endorsement. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have I don't to. endorse. Justin things. is not going to force you to see not this play. Force you. Hey, no. slave pre- p- play. play. It's a it's play. There, it's there, but heavily nominated. It didn't win a lot, but it heavily nominated. Well, that's heavily all. considered for things. That's all that matters. No. Yeah. So, but my they thing thought is, real hard about it. Yeah. With with black with any women, I don't believe. That uh, it is silly, I believe, to 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 draw a line anywhere. But we can all have preferences. You can say I I, I prefer black women, you know. But oh, I, I prefer but, my and, wife. And, and here's the thing, you know, that's what I'm saying. You mm. prefer 
<laughs> you prefer your wife specifically. Mm-hmm. And uh, but before her, I'm sure you preferred black women in just generally. I mean, I would prefer a woman who loved me, and I would but hope that's to I'm find saying. a black woman. You know what I mean? We have preferences, and right. that's fine. My preference is black women, but you know, I'm fu- I'll fuck anybody. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter. Like you go all sometimes <laughs> you, you get gotta, it. Sometimes you gotta get it. Yeah, you know what I mean. They and listen, get man, it. you in Hollywood. These, you know, well, sometimes the sometimes you can fuck them all at the same time. That's that's well. Don't do that. Trouble. No, that'll get you in trouble. And I'm in married, so well, do it for me, so I can live vicariously through you. <laughs> all right, that'd well, be great for me. I'll do it for you. Yeah, only because you asked me. To. <laughs> but I and think then tell me all about it in details because I don't have these things. I will, but I think there's something. <laughs> but uh, no, I have. I feel like I, I should because uh, we got Jordan Peele, we got Dave Chappelle, we got uh, Colin Kaep- Kaepernick. These are all black men who very well represent the black community but just so happen to not marry a black woman that's okay you said jordan peele yeah and keegan too <laughs> well hey man you gotta do what you gotta do yeah, man no. <laughs> you gotta have some fun why not hey, listen man well, here's, but, but my point but you see my point guys. you see my point is that like there's some the, i believe that that the pro the pro pro black to be like oh if you're not married to a black woman you don't get to participate in the conversation that is to me not helpful i think anyone. it's difficult. if you're making a good point I, I, i'm not the kind of you know dr umar johnson yeah there are some who's just like yeah. oh you can't be a leader of black people if you date if you if some you people, die, if you if 100%. you basically diverge your yeah. equity into the white people right and i say okay i understand what you're saying here i'm not saying that you can't have a voice or say something that's not prominent absolutely but but right but just because Jordan Peele's making black stuff and he don't cast white people, but he cast a, a white woman as his main person mm-hmm. in his life, doesn't mean he doesn't have a prominent understanding of race relations and a voice. But maybe he's not the person who's going to be black centric. I mean, he makes black centric content. All, all that matters. His life all, isn't black centric, and, and 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 that doesn't really matter because you know that's a word that just means. What like your whole like some people are black centric and they don't actually believe it. They they sneak off and fuck and cheat on their black wife. So it's like these people, anybody that really tries that hard at anything, I think they're trying to like make up for something. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, you're right. You can fuck who you want, but you have a black queen. And I want to say I want to talk about this. I know we got to get you out of here. So you are on uh, uh, the second season, or oh, third. Third season. Third season of uh, Umbrella. Umbrella Academy. Academy. Umbrella, Ella, Ella. Ella, Ella, A. Ella. <laughs> it's a Academy, good show. Have you yeah. seen Umbrella Academy? He's on the next season. Or so they say. That's dope. Oh, yeah. I don't even remember being on it, though. <laughs> so it's gonna, no, so I'm going to have to watch it and re- like reinvigorate my memory. I forgot all about the whole yeah. experience. We'll, well, all, we'll all have to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to watch it regardless. Uh, love the monkey. Did you meet the monkey? The monkey? Yeah. There's a monkey in the show? Have you seen Umbrella Academy? Have you seen the <laughs> no, show? No, I wasn't on? a big fan of the show. Well, And uh, I ended up getting this audition for the show. And I said, I'm not really going to do this. So um, I didn't really do it. Not even a fan, but still. No, I'm kidding. I love the show. The show's great. Okay, good. No, it was a good show. And listen, Elliot Page. Yeah, Elliot. Is it Elliot? It's Elliot, yeah. It's Elliot Page. <laughs> you didn't commit a crime. Okay, good. Now I just want to make sure. <laughs> hey, something these days you got to be careful. Yeah. Elliot, though, good dude. Can I say dude? Yeah. Yes. Good dude. Elliot prefers uh, he him. And he's Great a guy. Good guy. Great guy. Uh, sexy guy. I mean, if you're into all beings, I am. I'm into a uh, pulse. If, if you're into abs, then yes. Yeah, man. For Late sure. Abs. Yeah. Listen, I worked out with Elliot. How was that? Earning those abs. Mm-hmm. Earning those. Ads. That's great. That's great, Elliot. And 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 he's the kind of person that clearly earned everything uh, in his career. I think so. I think that uh, Elliot, great work. Um, in his entire career, he's just been a great artist. Mm-hmm. And you know, and the fact that he used to be, uh, not Elliot. Mm-hmm. I think he should be. Uh, is it okay to reference uh, the past gender, but we are speaking in the past? I mean, you know, just you like, can say you can say Elliot. That's fine. So when Elliot was a woman, right? That is that fair to say? 
I mean, how do you sure. say that? I mean, sure. I mean, you can say uh, previously Elliot did blank. I just don't know how to say it. But I'm talking about when Elliot was head of vagina, or maybe Elliot still does have a vagina. I don't know. I don't really inquire what's. You, you uh, just, you just, there. you just refer to them however they prefer to be talked about. So that's right. I'm they, referring to when they, but I'm talking about a specific time where they were a different gender. Well, How I mean, do I specify that? Was well, is the why gender do you need being to specific? Right, the exactly. I had a point. Okay. Well, okay, then 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 specify the gender and make your point and we'll see if it's wrong. Good. Yeah. <laughs> My point was we'll tell you on a scale of one to ten how cancelled you are. <laughs> Listen, I'm just talking about when she so it's like Kate, Kate, Caitlyn Jenner uh uh is is a woman. But if if I wanted to tell a story about how I met Caitlyn when she was uh you Bruce. Know, Bruce is that story automatically You can't talk wrong? about anything from the previous life of the person before they now re Is that how it works? No, I don't know. Is that how I'm it works? I'm just saying, is that no, what you're asking? No, that's not how it works, but it, it depends on... Is there the a reason why you have to gender, her, gender this person in past tense? Well, specifically for my point was, uh, and this is all in praise, I'm a huge fan of Elliot, but when she was, uh, uh, she, she, she transferred, he, 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 uh, he, I didn't mean now I, you committed no, no, a crime. No, no, but you know what I mean. When he uh, made the transition, I thought that was the bravest. All jokes aside, I thought it was the bravest thing you can do in today's society is to be a white man. <laughs> that was a, I get that was it. A I mean, it was a long way, way for a short drink of water. Yeah. Man. <laughs> I mean, very sure. I'm, I'm still yeah. thirsty. You gotta give me more. But I'm, well, hey, Elliot is a good guy. Like I said, no, but listen. also, I, I, it, it is, it, it is hard being a white guy. It's hard being a white man. It really isn't. This guy, he's not. He's I not listen, as, a, as a white I, man. I know from experience. Okay. Yeah, as a white guy. Well, listen. All I mean is that you don't have as much power. This is what I mean when I say that. And this is f- true. You do not have as much power. As you used to, as a white man, we are. It is the walls are closing in. What What was the power that white men had before? Just getting away with everything. Now they get away with most, and then and then we'll, it'll get smaller and smaller until they can't get away with anything. I don't think. I think that white men still get away with stuff with each yeah, other. Of course. What my point <laughs> is that they, if I if I seen you doing something, brother, I'd be like, all right, brother. Next time, you know. What I'm saying? You mean as a black man? <laughs> Listen, I've had black police officers who should have taken me to jail. Be, but because you're black, they're like, well, whatever. That's great. That's really, that's what they should do. That's what they're there for. You know, but uh, it's, my point is that, like, you're, that, what, 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 was, what was my point? But, but being a white guy in 2022 right. yeah, is, like, guy. is like, you've been playing a game on God mode, mm-hmm. and you take God mode off, but you're still on easy. That's right. Is that true? So it's not hard. Is that is that it was that easy for it's, white guys? It's it's hard in the context of when you've never experienced any sort of discrimination or even adversity and you start to experience even a tiny little bit that can be seen as an assault mm-hmm. on your status. And it is very directly but in a good way because it's balancing out. So it's and like so it, I'm just recognizing it's a tough time to be a white man and the point was Elliot is brave. Well, I, mean, I think Elliot is brave one because to do something so publicly and, and at a moment where you're in the middle of doing your show, you're in the middle of all this. Listen, I mean it's it's kind of hard to come out with this kind of stuff. It was bold too. And they're incorporating that in the show. I as I understand, right? I mean they you know, it it seems like they might Okay. I don't know. Well, either way, <laughs> that's fun. <laughs> that's, that, that's I don't cool. know. Well, you did. It's a good show. <laughs> Justin, he doesn't watch his own show. No, actually, I do watch it now. My okay. wife was the biggest Umbrella Academy fan. and It's I, really good. And I thought that the show, you know, was silly just from watching it in yeah. quarantine. Yeah. And then I was like. Oh, it's got some superhero stuff. I think what I fell in love with about the show was the interpersonal stuff. Like, I, I don't even care about the superhero stuff. You That's know what the I best mean? Part. Yeah, that, right. that, that should always be the best part. But uh, it it was fun shooting it, right, I assume? It was the best. I had, yeah. Those people rock. That's awesome. And I we, love that team. And uh, so you got that coming out. When is that coming out? Well, they're going to tell me soon, I guess. Okay, yeah. It's coming they'll, out They'll tell me when the you, they tell you. I, I, I guarantee it. <laughs> Great. They didn't tell me those posters were coming out. They were just like, well, oh, by the way. You're killing it, though. You're Mr. Netflix. 
this guy over here. I man. know. They Mr. just Netflix. they just won't let me get another job somewhere else. That's good. Hey, man, good, <laughs> good problem. Listen, man, thank you for coming. I don't want to keep you. Uh, everybody, uh, where can they follow you? You can follow me, uh, Justin underscore Cornwall, uh, uh, on Instagram, Justin underscore Cornwall on Twitter, Justin Cornwall, Spotify, Apple Music, where all your favorite streaming stuff. I'm not on Stem Player yet, but I'm working on it. And uh, <laughs> Stem coming soon. <laughs> exactly. Get my stems, baby. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? saying i might come out with some nfts of uh corn with different color corn on them is going to be called the, the corn tokens you should uh, yeah <laughs> man you're gonna be next time you come on the podcast you're gonna be a justin's corn tokens man that's it and uh yeah so much money netflix is where most of my content lives now the right. other content has been canceled and it's hard to find it's good luck. That's funny. You know what? <laughs> That's actually canceled. Not no, actually. Canceled. <laughs> yeah, it's a wrap. They said no. It's it's, it's we're done. All right. But thank you for coming out. Follow me on uh yeah everything. What Instagram? Trey Stewart. T R E S T E W A R T one. Trey Stewart one. Uh and yeah, thank you so much for coming out, man. Yeah, man. Fuck Thanks yeah. for shooting the shit with me. Or you it. or me shoot we did this together. We did it, man. We we uh solved a lot of stuff, man. Mystery and, uh, solved. Mysteries yeah. of the world. Mysteries, we did it, man. And go out there and fuck some white women.